So while I was there, there was a gentleman who said he's suffering from chronic arthritis and whatnot, and it's... Oh, I've mentioned a story, I think, previously of a guy who had to trade in his Harley Davidson and he... I think he'd done like 700 miles on it. Oh no, it was, it was only 100 something. Maybe, I, I can't remember. Memory's crap. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, the Harley rider had to trade in his bike because he couldn't operate the clutch anymore because of his hand. And this other fella, he's got arthritis in his legs. So he was having a look at the black Kawasaki Vulcan, which was next to mine, or near enough anyway. And he was eyeing it up and I wanted to try and find the guy to see if he was in the, the Kawasaki group, KVSR on Facebook. And unfortunately he left when I had my back turned and he was gone fast as a shot, so... But yeah, so, um, a bit disappointing to say the least, but never mind. Anyway... <coughs> So this chap was telling me his story about the arthritis in his legs and such and he said I'm, I'm looking for a, a motorbike which is comfortable for, to ride and he knew that he wanted a cruiser and he was standing around this black Kawasaki Vulcan with someone else because he wanted to you know, ask if he could sit on the thing so I said well I've got an orange one over there why don't you sit on that he said are you sure and I said yeah you know <clears throat> I'm always happy to put a, a smile on someone's face sometimes I think I'm too nice Um, oh. when he sat on the bike he had such a smile on his face it was so nice to see so he, had, he had such a big smile on his face and he said you know what that's pretty much sealed it and he went on to say that um, he'd sat on a tiger I think it's a, a Triumph Tiger I believe it's in a, a, an adventure bike, if memory serves me correctly. And he said he, he swung a leg over the top of that. Ooh, that is a red light. He was telling me about this adventure bike and how he fell in love with it, he loved the looks of it and such. And he swung a leg over it and sat on it, loved it, enjoyed it, fair play. Is he feeling tired? <laughs> um, anyway, <clears throat> um, so yeah, he, he sat on the bike and then fell in love with it. As he got off, his heel clipped the seat and it was enough of a clip to knock the bike over. Oh boy, so that pretty much killed it for him. And at the same time with the arthritis in his legs, getting on and off the bike would be a bit of a pain. So when he was sat on this, he realized how low it is, how easy it is to get on and off. And he fell in love all over again. And you can see like the look in his eyes, the anticipation, the, the excitement. And as he got off it, he said, yeah, that's done it. That's, that sealed it for me. I'll probably get one of these and I'll, for me there's just that feeling where and I explained it to him as well it's one thing I, I love being able to put a smile on people's faces especially bikers but there's that unique feeling where you can show someone your bike it's not expensive it's cheap well, quite cheap anyway compared to what some of the other vehicles are on the market these days and um, so nice to to be able to show him there's a tiger there you go I was right it's an adventure bike but yeah it's, it's just that feeling where you, it's a satisfaction you know of showing someone something and they not only say oh yeah that's pretty cool they actually say no that that you know you can genuinely make a difference to someone yeah you know? To me, there's, there's no feeling like that 
there's no feeling like the feeling you get when you can talk to someone and you can help guide them or you can give them a direction as to what they can do or what an option is and for him the option is get a Kawasaki Vulcan and oh, it's a feeling that's not going to go away for a while and again, it's, it's one of those things where you have to see it just the, the reaction on his face was priceless and I mean that in the best way as well is it was just so nice to see someone's eyes just doosh I'm, bab I'm babbling on now, aren't I? Whee! Dickhead. Ah. Feels good, man. Feels real good. And I think I remember seeing a couple of comments, I think on the Introducing Jelly Bean video, where people were saying, yeah, I, I bought a Kawasaki Vulcan after seeing a few videos on YouTube, and yours was one of them. And, oh my god, just... Don't buy a bike because I ride it, you know, it's, I can't stress that enough. Test ride it first, have a bit of fun, play around with it a bit and then determine, all right, is that the bike for me or do I need to make another choice? Don't do what I did, which was exactly what I'm saying not to do. I saw a few videos on YouTube, it happened to have the same nickname I did, still do to an extent and um, I just went out and bought it didn't even test ride it didn't I, I sat on the bike once and I thought that was it that's the bike for me sometimes you know but sitting on a bike compared to riding it is obviously two very different things and uh, well needless to say I was silly but because of my silliness you're now watching this video hey so I guess we both win really, and I've fallen in love with this bike. I can't see myself wanting uh, a larger bike anytime soon. It'll be nice to have the extra power, but on a bike like this, you kind of need more power. It is how it is. If I want to do, if I want to get up to 60, I can get up to 60. If I want to overtake someone, I can overtake someone. It's easy. I'm no longer restricted by the... Uh, I did tiny 125. And that being said, some of the 125 engines coming out these days are just, oh, significant amount of power. And I dare say, I'll, I'll go in as far enough to say, I don't believe 125cc engines should be capable of going over 70 miles an hour. I know there's situations where you need to, but if that small bike can get to a substantial speed that quickly, Especially with like the, the system we've got at the moment in the UK where you can literally pay 130 quid have what, five six hours worth of training and then that's it you can ride a 125 cc bike and if that bike can take you 80 mile an hour then it's kind of like whoa hang on a minute you know that's bit much for newer riders it's kind of why I liked having an older bike because to get up to 60 mile an hour it's just you know you, you get halfway down the dual carriageway before you even got close to 65 so there was the sense of come on I want to go faster but at the same time the engines the poor engines just like nah I'm not designed for this mate calm down being said you know it's, it's been a good day from what I got told by one of the guys that I know the guy I was looking for actually the ride out didn't really go to plan it didn't leave on time or something I don't know the, the bikes which I saw weren't the ones going to where I was going they were going somewhere else which is good for me because I was going to turn around and follow them but um, yeah all things considered today worked out okay it worked out good 
and uh, because of that I've got a big bowl of happy feelings as well that's cool I might go get myself uh, some fast food to celebrate but while we're on the subject as well depending on how long the video is going to be if I edit out enough or not enough basic kindness is something which I find extraordinarily rare these days and it's kind of one reason why I'm nice it's because people don't expect it and when people can show that they are truly grateful for something like can I sit on your bike yeah sure swing a leg over and then I said to him you know put both your feet up and I was able to hold the front of the bike up so he sat there as if he would be actually riding the bike and it's, it's just he just looks so comfortable on it it's so relaxed and um, saying that as well, I'm not trying to get brownie points by the way, but uh, a little while ago I saw a, a kitten sort of wandering around underneath one of these sort of underpasses and there was a, obviously a collar on it and there was a postcode and a mobile phone number. I thought, oh, okay, maybe the cat's lost, so I picked up the cat, typed the postcode into Google Maps and the cat was a good mile and a half, two miles away from their house. I don't know how far cats will go, but to me I made the decision that this young cat is probably quite a distance away from its home. And there's a main road in between that as well, so I want to make sure this cat gets home safely. So I phoned the number on the collar a couple of times, got a, an answer, and then I said, um, are you missing a cat? And the woman on the other side of the phone was, yeah, actually, yeah, I'm missing a cat, she was Spanish. So, I couldn't hear her entirely well, but enough was there. And I said, okay, well, your cat's over here, and your house is way over there, so, you know, do you want me to hold on to your cat and meet you somewhere so you can pick it up, or do you want me just to leave it as it is? And she said, no, we'd like the cat back. <laughs> And I don't think she got the impression that I was going to steal the cat because, you know, stealing cats is just... Oh, stealing pets in general is just scum work. And, uh, yeah, after a little bit of a confusion and mix-up, eventually um, I picked up the cat. I'm not good with animals, although I love them. I had the cat in my arms, the poor thing was meowing away, it wanted to get down. I was like, if I let you down, then you're probably going to run somewhere. And if that involves a car, or oh, I can't live with that. So, needless to say, the cat got returned to its owner. She was extremely thankful. And that was my good deed done. And it's nice when you do something nice for people, you know, something unexpected. Because while it is unexpected, they just get this sudden like, oh, you didn't have to do that, that's amazing. That's so nice of you and then I'm just sat there like yeah well it's just what I do <laughs> I just stand there my reactive glasses on that uh, get darker when it's sunny and I'm just like yeah it's cool man don't worry about it it's just what I do I don't live by any rules not even my own silly <laughs> yeah so if there's anything I can say to you guys out there just be nice to someone, you know, even if it's on an email, or send a little smiley face, sometimes that can make someone's day, sometimes it's seen as unprofessional. Oh, but yeah, make the most of it. You'll find that sometimes when you're unexpectedly nice to someone, they'll be unexpectedly nice back, even if it's like an offer of a cup of tea, or can I get you a beer or something later on, it's just, you know, it breaks up your day as well. Like today I could have this, this and this planned. I've got a bit of space in between. Oh look, I've got time to do something nice for someone. Opportunity arises. Let's do something nice. Off you go. Wee! Good feelings. Oh, that corner's going to look so good on that GoPro. <laughs> if it's still on. It's still on. Success. We got the footage, guys.
so I'm going to end it there at this rather boring set of lights so I hope you've enjoyed I've got a few things in planning at the moment which uh, might be a bit difficult to fully settle but it does kind of involve a rather long flight that's all I'm going to say on the matter there tease away so I hope you have a good one enjoy yourself take care ride safe and all that and I will see you next time. It's off for now.